Hi, this is Kath Gavin. If you haven't watched Beware the Wolf Part 1, in which I talk about sheep's clothing, you should stop this video and watch that one now. I've put a link to it in the description box below. This is Part 2, in which I delve into the evil fruits that identify a false prophet. So let me begin by reading Matthew 7, verses 15, 16 and 17. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So before I get into evil fruit, let's consider what a good tree is. Jeremiah 17 verses seven and eight says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, in whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree, planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So this tree is faced with the heat of the sun, yet its leaf remains green. Why? Because it's planted by the waters and its roots spread out by the river. Even in the year of drought, it never ceases to yield fruit because it never ceases to abide in and drink from the river. So what does the river represent or what is water symbolic of in the Bible? Well, if we go to the Gospel of John, we find chapter after chapter makes reference to water. The very first reference is water baptism. John the Baptist was baptizing people unto repentance. Now, water baptism is a physical illustration that helps us understand how salvation works. Romans 6 verses 3 to 6 says that we must be baptized into Christ's death through repentance. Repentance is being crucified with Christ and buried in the likeness of his death. Only then can we be resurrected with him that is born of the Spirit. Now if we go back to the Gospel of John, we find another reference to water in chapter 4. Jesus was speaking to a Samaritan woman and he offered her living water. He said, whosoever drinks this living water shall never thirst. That ties in perfectly with Revelations 22 verses 1 and 2, which say, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal. On either side of the river was there the tree of life, which yielded her fruit every month. Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So the tree in Jeremiah 17, 8, whose roots continually abide in the river, represents a person who has been baptized into Christ's death through repentance and is therefore drinking of the Spirit, which gives eternal life. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Now God is love. Being filled with the Spirit is being filled with love. Ephesians 3, 17 says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. This is a good tree. A person who is rooted and grounded in love will manifest what? Love, even in the heat of the sun, even in the year of drought, they will never cease to yield good fruit. Good fruit is listed in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The kind of fruit one produces when under pressure reveals one's true character, whether one is a good tree or a corrupt tree, whether one is rooted and grounded in love or not. A false prophet can put on a loving facade for a time, he can imitate the fruit of the Spirit for a time. But when the heat is on, 
when the pressure is on, he will manifest the works of the flesh, which are listed in Galatians 5, verses 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. A false prophet may not manifest the obvious sins of adultery or fornication or drunkenness or murder, rather the subtle sins of strife, envy, hatred and wrath. These are the things one is more likely to see in the attitudes and behaviours of a wolf. And there's a perfect example of this in 3 John. 3 John is a very short letter written by the elder unto Gaius. In it, the elder commends Gaius on showing hospitality towards brethren who are travelling about ministering truth. In verse 8, he says, We ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Then he continues in verse 9, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephus, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Preeminence means a desire to be first. This is strife, an evil fruit. Strife is erythia in the Greek and means a desire to put oneself forward or self-promotion. Self-promotion is one of the hallmarks of a wolf. It could be as blatant as him saying, I am the Lamb of God. Or a little more subtle than that, he could say, where would you be without me? If it wasn't for me, you'd still believe false doctrine. Anything that looks or sounds remotely like self-promotion should be a red flag to us. Let me continue in verse 10. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words. And not content therewith, neither doth he receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. When a person is busy promoting self, they will be envious of anyone more successful or capable than themselves. Envy is another evil fruit. There are several verses in the Bible which link strife to envy. Here are a few. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3 says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife. James 4.14 But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. James 3.16 for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. The envious wolf will cut down or drive out anyone he finds threatening. Therefore, he will make up stories, spread rumours and straight out abuse people from the pulpit. This is where wrath comes in, another evil fruit. Wrath is thumos in the Greek and means anger that boils up. Wolves tend to use the pulpit as a means to safely express their rage. So who was it that Diotrephus spoke malicious words against? Well, in verse 12, it says, Demetrius hath good report of all men and of the truth itself. How could Diotrephus speak malicious words against a man who had good report of all men and of the truth itself? because wolves are full of hatred, another evil fruit. Hatred is missio in the Greek and means to detest, especially persecute. Wolves actually persecute Christians. So what was the advice given by the elder unto Gaius in regards to Diotrephus? Well, in verse 11 he says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good, he that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. This is similar to Matthew 7, 17, which says, A good tree bringeth forth good fruit,
but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Strife, envy, hatred, wrath are evil fruits. They are what characterize a wolf. They are what identify a false prophet as being a false prophet. I personally was under a pastor like Diotrephus for many years. And it wasn't until a situation happened similar to that described in 3 John that I finally decided to come out from under his influence. I did not make that decision lightly. It was a huge thing for me to come away from that group. But evil fruit was so clearly evident, I was forced to make a choice. To go along with something I deeply disagreed with would make me a dishonest person. That's not good for one's spiritual health. So when the wolf pokes his head out of the sheep's clothing and you see the works of the flesh clearly evident in his attitudes and behaviours, what will you do? Look the other way? Ignore the evidence? Forgive and forget. Just keep praying for him to change. Put up with evil fruit because, after all, he's a great preacher. He has incredible Bible knowledge. He does missionary work. Matthew 7.15 says, Beware of false prophets, meaning separate yourself from them, flee them for the sake of your own soul. So in conclusion, a person who is rooted and grounded in love will manifest love, even in the heat of the sun, even in the year of drought, he will never cease to yield good fruit. Good fruit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The kind of fruit one produces when under pressure reveals one's true character, whether one is a good tree or a corrupt tree, whether one is rooted and grounded in love or not. A false prophet can put on a loving facade for a time. He can imitate the fruit of the spirit for a time, but when the heat is on, when the pressure is on, he will manifest the works of the flesh, strife, envy, hatred, wrath. These are evil fruit. They are what characterize a wolf. They are what identify a false prophet as being a false prophet. Ye shall know them by their fruits. So please leave comments below. You can also contact me on crystalriver053 at gmail.com. You can check out my blog. I've put a link to it in the description box below. If this video helped you, please like it, share it with others, and subscribe to my channel, Crystal Clear. Let us each work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Love you all. God bless.